Good evening, everybody, and a very warm welcome indeed to the second ever NGK Spark Plug Esports Championship live here in Munich. My name is Paul Jeffrey, and alongside me, I'm joined by the man, the myth, and the legend. It is Der Esports driver and reigning ADAC GT Teams champion, Leonard Kribner. How are you, sir? Thank you for the warm welcome, Paul. Probably the most excitement anybody has ever announced my name with <laughs> um yeah i'm doing great i hope you're doing really well too um and i can't wait for what's what's waiting for us it's a 60 minute race on the nurburgring nordschleife the final of the ngk esports cup um the most beautiful the most difficult track in the world the green hell everybody knows it everyone loves it and yeah i'm delighted i can't wait yeah, we've got a great day of action ahead of us. But of course, a big challenge comes with some big prizes. So if you would be very kind as to bring that bit of board up there while I introduce from NGK himself, Andreas May. Andreas, welcome. And can you tell us all about these great prizes? <laughs> Thank you very much for the great welcome. Yeah, the first prize are two VIP tickets for the 24-hour race uh, at the Nürburgring, also including uh, access to the lounge. And... Uh, yeah, also the second and third prize are here. So uh, we have the Fanatec uh, Club Sport Wheel Formula 2.5. Um, and uh, the third place is the JBL Quantum uh, headset. And uh, for the fourth to tenth uh, place, we also have a nice goodie bag that you will get. Uh, so everybody from the first to the tenth place will get something. So um, I'm very excited and I'm very looking forward to a great race at the Nürburgring Nordschleife. Incredible stuff. So are we. But before we get any further, I'll come back to you, Leo and Andrea, shortly. But let's have a very, very quick look at what happened last time out at the Hungaro Ring for round four. We're just about to get ourselves racing here at the Hungara Ring. The last chance qualifier here in the NGK Spark Plugs Esports Cup is about to get itself underway. Julian Kunzer from pole position brings us to the green flag. We're racing down towards turn number one here. It was a poor start by Leonard Carter, which allows the run from the Porsche, potentially around the outside, in towards turn number one here. Philip Pau going the long way around here on cold tires can be very, very sketchy indeed. He's able to hang it out there. Tries to follow through in the tire tracks of your race leader and pole position sitter of Julian Kunzer. Kunzer forced to actually go defensive in towards turn number two here as Carter decides to go on the charge. We've got ourselves a little bit of an instant towards the very back of the field. Multiple drivers involved in this one. Meanwhile, battle for reverse grid pole position is on. Luca Vertrick has been caught and now Farkas is looking to try and go the, around the outside at the penultimate corner. Does he have the inside? Well, he's going to try and dive in on it anyway in towards the final corner. Farkas really wanting desperately to gain that reverse grid pole position. 30 seconds on the clock as they head their way across the line now. Vertrick defensive in towards turn one. Porsche launching it around the outside once again as Sebastian Rees sticks his nose in. It gets cut off as he has problems on the inside there as the battle for the reverse grid pole position continues on as Farkas, oh, he's got himself the line around the outside and it's a spin. It's a spin for Vertrek and it's a spin for Farkas as well. Oh, from hero to zero for Farkas there. He got himself reverse grid pole and then he meant it himself coming off the corner. That is absolutely tragic there. Final corner now. Another big wide arc taken by the Mercedes, but it's not going to matter in the end. Julian Kunze heads his way across the line to take the first race win here at the Hungara Ring in the NGK uh, Sparkplugs Esports Cup. One step closer to a slot in the final for Julian Kunze. So Marcel Hulock on pole position then. Rokas to, uh, to be on the second row, starting P3. Christian Orban, second place. 
of course, Kunzer and Carton starting P10 and P9, respectively. The final qualification round's underway. Someone's had a nightmare at the very back of the grid there. That's Craig Curtis completely dumping it into the wall as we charge down towards turn number one. Hulock on the early challenge here uh, as he barred his doors with Daniel Parvan as, oh, Hulock's completely made me a mess out of turn number one. Opens up the inside. Someone's in the wall. This is going to cause a bunch of carnage towards the very back of the field. What a mess back there. Mikael Lapanek, Vertrix in it. Hulok's in it. Oh, that could have been gone. That could have been handled so much better, folks. Still chances for Kunsa to try and make this one work. We ride on board with him on the run up in towards turn four. He's been having the habit of a bit of a look through turn five as well. It requires such a huge commitment to try and make this one work. He's going to get squeezed out a little bit there. Not going to be too appreciative of that. Parvan still leads it towards the chicane. Parvan still leads coming off the chicane, but there was a little bit of a bobble. And there's the attempt from Kunza that has gone all wrong as he spins out in towards the tire barriers and files down in towards P8 there. Harvan oh, does have a little bit of damage, but thankfully for him, it is the final lap. So not all that much can Philip Powell can do about it. But after a frantic finish, it is Daniel Parvan that comes across the line to take the race win after taking the race lead early on lap number one of this event. Harvan takes the win. Philip Howe in second place and Kristen Auburn will round out the top three. Some exceptional and dramatic racing, I am sure you will agree. And we've got plenty more still to go in this final round. Let's have a quick look at the timetable of what to expect over the course of this broadcast. We'll be starting qualifying very shortly indeed, where our drivers set their time for a standing start on the Nürburgring Neuschleife and then we'll be heading straight into the main event, a 60-minute race, winner takes all. And at the chequered flag, we'll have crowned our champions. And Leo, it's such a unique proposition, the Norse life, for such a difficult race. What are these drivers going to be expecting over the course of the next 60 minutes of racing? Um, definitely a lot of sweat. It's going to be exhausting, I can tell you that from own experience. The Norse life is always something exceptional, something extraordinary in that kind of regard um personally i think a lot of drivers will know what's on the line now with qualifying because um uh, we have no grand prix track on this version of the north Fifa, so overtaking even though the track is over 20 kilometers long it's going to be a tough challenge um you only have one or two spots where it's really possible so uh you will if you want to to have a chance at the big prices you really want to be at the at the front of the grid right from the get-go yeah absolutely and andreas we say it's a difficult challenge, but the drivers are up to it. They've been great this season. How has the th racing and the, the, the racecraft been from your perspective? Yeah, very great. So um, I also um, watched every race. So every race was very um, interesting. Also um, some moves and some also some crashes. And um, I also have some, uh, some numbers um, for you. So we have uh, 3,000 drivers on the leaderboard. Wow. We have uh, 18,000 leaderboard accesses and we have 300,000 rounds that we driven on the leaderboard. So very, very good reputation, I would say. Uh, I, uh, I would say. And uh, we have um, people from 92 countries that wow. are just uh, on Off the globe. participating at, uh, at, the, at the NJK Sparkplug Esports Cup. So very good very good uh, numbers uh, I need to say so looking forward also to the uh, yeah to a great race yeah today to a great final yeah yeah that's some sensational figures and of course there can only ever be one winner in a competition like this in 2022 we had a great season and a great final and our championship winner had a wonderful experience so let's have a quick look at what he got up to when he take took his prize for the victory in the 2022 championship.
Here we go then, for the final time down the Dirtinger Hood. Does Latovsky have the uh, legs to get himself towards the end of this race? You can see the weaving already from yeah, Attila Dini. He's right. trying to break the slipstream. Now side by side for the championship win. Dina has held on to it. Dina has held on. Can he hold on for the final corner as well? Just one more corner oh! to go. Latovsky looks for it. Jens Heimlock open. And the mega <laughs> defense from Attila Dinya. Dinya takes the race win. He is the NGK. K Spark Plugs Esports Cup champion. Ja, wir sind jetzt hier in der SX Lounge am Nürburgring und äh, begrüßen hier äh, Attila Dina, unseren Esports äh, Cup Gewinner von NGK Sparkplug. Und ähm, ja, stell dich mal kurz vor, Attila. Ja, genau, ich bin Attila Dina, bin 18 Jahre alt mittlerweile. Ähm, ja, und fahre hobbymäßig Sim Racing, äh, meistens Race Room, zwischendurch auch äh, nochmal was anderes. Und das sehr erfolgreich, muss ich sagen, <lacht> weil du hast ja unseren Cup gewonnen. Erzähl mal so ein bisschen den Weg dahin, wie wie das so für dich war, was, wie, wie so deine Strategie war? Die Strategie war eigentlich relativ simpel, mich im ersten Rennen zu qualifizieren fürs Finale. Es hat auch zum Glück funktioniert. Und im Finale war dann halt die Strategie, ja, guck, dass du hinter dem, hinter dem ersten Platz bleibst. Ich habe mein Setup so gebaut, dass ich halt schön viel Topspeed auf der Döttinger Höhe habe. Und ja, es hat im Prinzip so funktioniert, im Prinzip, wie es geplant, geplant war. Ja. Und ich habe um, äh, um Haaresbreite noch den Sieg behalten. Ja, ich muss auch sagen, äh, das war super, super spannend, das auch mitzuverfolgen. Ich war ja live im Studio in München und äh, euch beide da zu sehen äh, im, im Kampf um den ersten Platz, das war echt ein Highlight. Ähm, erzähl mal so ein bisschen, wie du zu, überhaupt zum Simracing gekommen bist. Ja, es äh, hat eigentlich schon im, im Kindesalter angefangen mit äh, einer großen Interesse für, für Autos mhm. äh, und ist dann irgendwann, äh, ja, bin ich halt da, habe ich vom, vom Simracing erfahren und dachte mir, hey, das probierst du auch mal aus. Das ja. war Anfang 2017 ja. und äh, bin dann die erste Zeit eigentlich nur zum Spaß gefahren, halt einfach ein bisschen Spaß haben mit Autos mhm. ähm, und bin dann Anfang 2019 in den kompetitiven Bereich eingestiegen und äh, bin da bisher auch geblieben. Und ich sehe auch schon hier an deinem Pullover, wir haben die, die beste Finalstrecke gewählt für dich auch, weil du auch ein großer Fan bist vom Nürburgring, nehme ich an. Ja, definitiv. Äh, definitiv meine Lieblingsstrecke, ja. vor allem die Nordschleife. Die Grand Prix Strecke bin ich jetzt nicht so ein großer Fan von, aber äh, die Nordschleife macht es einfach wieder wett. jetzt so dein Resümee vom Tag. Hat es dir gefallen? Hat es dir Spaß gemacht? Ja, definitiv. Immer wieder schön hier zu sein. Äh, danke für die Competition, danke für die Tickets. Ja, ähm, ja hat riesig Spaß gemacht. Ja, da bleibt es mir noch übrig, ähm, dir viel Spaß zu wünschen am Nürburgring äh, beim 24-Stunden-Rennen. Ich hoffe, du hast hier eine richtig gute Zeit und kannst es genießen und äh, würde mich freuen, wenn du beim nächsten eSports Cup auch wieder dabei bist. Ja, vielen Dank. Äh, würde mich freuen auf den nächsten Cup. A very impressive young man. But of course, a new year ushers in a new cohort of drivers. So let's have a quick look at who will be on the grid for this final here in 2023. And Leo, you're an expert in the world of race room racing experience. One or two names that stand out there to you today. Yeah, obviously there's a lot of talent that's been here before last year. Um, Julian Kunz, Leonard Garten. Um, Sinan Gunai, those are also people who, who've previously been in uh, present in race room esports, and they're looking forward to um, to grabbing that first championship, to to moving into upper echelon of competition and race room. 
So a lot of young guns, you young Quinn's one of the veterans really, he's been here for years. So kind of an interesting dynamic also in that regard. So plenty plenty of excitement ready for us really. Yeah, a lot of talented drivers. They've all gone through a qualification process to get to this stage. So they're experienced, they've earned their place on the grid. And now he's often accused of the Nürburgring Ring Noise Lifer of being a great circuit, fantastic to hot lap around, but maybe not the best for racing. I think our final from 2022, the final two minutes, disproved that one significantly. Let's have a look at the drama that unfolded in the grand finale in 2022. One of the best defensive drives I've ever seen in my sim racing career, if Dina is able to hold on to this. It's not going to be impossible by any means, but it requires something absolutely special, and it may even require a mistake from Lutovsky as well. Uh, now uh, now I'm, I'm starting to think, you know, how can you really defend Lutovsky? I think for when, when, when there's really a move for Hohen Ryan, then, then think what happens first. You have this little left king, it doesn't matter. Mm. You have this this right corner where you, where you can really try to sneak to the inside. Then you have this right and left. So you want to stay on the left side. Oh. So is it really the, the move that you that you push your opponent, Antonio Spucher, to the outside? Or is it now for the for the last lap the way that you that you let him sneak into the inside of Antonio Spucher and then get him get rid of him and the very in the very last corner? I'm trying to keep my heart rate down at this point. <laughs> this is this is absolutely fantastic between these two. This is what we dreamed of coming towards the end of this event to have this fight uh, between these two for the for the championship win. At this point, we we recovered it in the pre-show. The driver that wins this race wins the championship. They win that experience to to go to the launch life of the 2022 Nurburgring 24 hours, and uh, it's uh, you know this is the, this is the top prize on the line. It's championship glory up for grabs here between Dina Very and Latovsky. Very defensive Lutovsky. lines from both drivers. Still, Dina doesn't uh, didn't look too well from the small carousel. Now watch the atmosphere. That that is the most important thing. Attila Dina had a good run to Schleibenschwanz. Here we go then for the final time down the Dirtinger Hood. Does Latovsky have the uh, legs to get himself towards the end of this race? He can <laughs> see the weaving already no, from Attila Dina. He's trying to break the slipstream, but I think it's going to be in vain. Look at how close uh, Latovsky is getting at this point. He's got to go for glory. He's got to go for the race win and the championship win now. Which way does he go? Driver's right hand side coming towards the end of the race now, side by side for the championship win down the hill here at the Nordschleifer down into the SS section. Dina has held on to it. Dina has held on. Can he hold on for the final corner as well? The, oh, Latowski's all over him coming through this entire section. Just one more corner oh! to go. Latowski looks for it. The inside wasn't open. And the <laughs> mega defense from Attila Dinya. Dinya takes the race win. He is the NGK Spark Plugs Esports Cup champion in an incredible finish. Gentlemen, to quote the late, great Murray Walker, that was absolutely barnstorming in the final lap of the final race of 2022. And Leo, for our drivers going into this next race, you know all about what it's like to prepare for a big event. What are they going to be doing? What, what are they going to be going through now to prepare themselves for what should be a bonkers 60 minutes of racing? Yeah, so... um. I think everybody has these kind of routines, a kind of thing you go through before every important important race, basically. So some have a last bit of food, have a have a drink or something. Some go to the toilet, like things, just things people need to do at some point. Um, everybody has these own things, uh, to to get into the focus, to to really be concentrated for 60 minutes straight and the Norwich life is no joke I think everyone who, who ever turned a lap on it knows that so um, it's really important to get into into that tunnel into the tunnel vision really yeah and Andreas of course you're maybe not quite as experienced of a sim racer as Leo here but what sort of, how fast are you in race room racing experience on this track in particular yeah um, I have good time really so uh, seven minutes so on the Grand Prix 
<laughs> was so. Uh, <laughs> I need to say it's. Uh, I need. Uh, we we have our own uh, race rack uh, uh, in in our office, and I tried it uh, sometime, and I need to say it's very hard to stay on the track and get a time and not just going from left to right and just um, just uh, finishing a, a race. It's uh, or a track. It's it's very hard and. To have a look at the at the list for I don't know place five hundred something, I just won't get there because it's just it's just so hard, so much training. You need to be focused very hard, and um, yeah, as as you uh, as you said, uh, Leo, it's it's for me it's just like going there and just asking myself how is it possible to drink something and uh, but uh, if you get used to it, I think it's could be easier, yeah. <laughs> It's the level is sensational of all these mm. drivers. And as you say, the times, not just today, but also throughout the competition have been so competitive. And I'm hearing, gentlemen, in my ear, that qualification is well underway now. So I reckon it's time for the talking to stop and for the action on track to begin. So let's head over circuit side and see how our drivers are going on setting their times ahead of the race that is happening in a few short moments time. Here we go, Leo, already warming the tyres up. How critical is it to get the car warmed up on a lap this long before going for the time attack? Um, I think uh, in this track with the length of the outlap, it's especially important to not um, rub off the tyres too much on the outlap. So it might be the case that tyres are cooled down by now, so people are weaving on the Dettinger Höhe on the long back straight of the Nordschleife to get temperature back in what we've just seen and uh, what we already can see behind uh, Cody Nikola Latkowski who's been fastest in the practice session is that someone's trying to get into a slipstream. Um, obviously great strategy if, if you're not on oh, no, leaving a bit of a gap but obviously strip, slipstream might also be a factor in the North Schleife with a lot of these great and these fast corners. If we know GT3 cars don't give don't punch the biggest hole through the air. It's often been remarked by drivers, in sim racing in particular, it's quite difficult to pick a draft up, but with so many quarters, 154 quarters in the Nordschleife, in reality, what, does, does it give you an advantage to get a draft off the car in front, or is it, is it going to compromise you more through the turns than you're going to benefit from the straights? I think on, on this layout of the Nordschleife, it will definitely give you an advantage in race room. So, um, uh, but as we've seen, I think people are rather trying to, to get a bit of a gap with the guy in front. So in case something goes wrong, which could be very likely on this track, as we've mentioned before many times, it's so difficult. Uh, people might end up in the wall or on the grass, and you don't want to be in the trajectory when people come back on the track. And that's a very good point, because there is so little runoff. It's a very old-school circuit, for want of a better way of putting it. A small mistake can lead to a very, very heavy contact can with the barriers. And as you rightly say, you're following somebody closely, you can very quickly get wrapped up in their accident. If you were in this race, what would be your strategy for qualification? Um, as we see, there is only eight and a half minutes left. Um, so the thing is, you will only get one try at a, at a flying lap. So you really want to make sure that a uh, flying lap is decent. Uh, maybe not go all out, not go 100%. I've heard some real race drivers never go 100% on the Nordschleife <laughs> anyways. But um, yeah, you want to leave a tiny bit of margin. So in case you make a mistake, you can still make it stick on the track. At least you don't throw away the comple complete lap in that case. So our uh, focus is really to get a solid anchor lap in. The one who risks most and, and doesn't throw it away, he might end up on pole. So I suppose that kind of leads me, conversely, you're saying about getting a bank lap in, which is absolutely right to set a representative time. How important is qualifying? It's a 60-minute race, it's a fairly long one. I'm going to look into my crystal ball, and I don't think I'm far wrong in saying this will be won by those who make the least mistakes rather than maybe the outright quickest. How important, how critical is quality for a good result today? Because don't forget, top three where the big prizes are won. Yeah, if, like obviously if you if you start at the front there's not a, a lot of cars running in front of you and that also means that um, uh, in case something happens you're not in the way of that so um, if you're up front a lot as we see already someone standing on the left of the track so mayhem starting already basically um, yeah 
if you're up front in the grid, there's there's not a lot of, that can go wrong in front of you. So you, you've got nothing nothing to avoid, nothing to go around, uh, and that's a big part of the race, definitely. And also, you need to keep in mind that there is no championship in place anymore. Who wins? The winner of this race is the winner of the championship, as we see Julian Quince uh, going down the the the, the hill, uh, going up the hill towards Mutkova. Um, yeah, you want to be at the front of this race because championship points don't matter anymore. And just look, we saw the picture in picture there of Kunsat. Look how calm he is behind the wheel. And that's the experience, isn't it? Experience as a racer on this platform around this circuit as well. It's all about conservation of movement, isn't it? Rather than being on your tiptoes all the time. Yeah, not too much unnecessary movement in the car. Keep it nice and steady, especially through this fast part of the circuit. German name Mutkova means corner where you need a lot of bravery and that's what it is. You almost go flat out, just a tight lift, maybe a shift down to fifth gear. Um, so really you need to keep your composure and keep the car on track there. Yeah, it's a real test, isn't it, of skill, experience and also nerve for these drivers. And just while we're waiting for the times to start coming in and the provisional grid starting to form, I want to say a big hello to everybody out there on the internet watching on the Race Room YouTube channel, the NGK Spark Club channel uh, on YouTube and Race Room Facebook as well. It's great to have you with us. Feel free to drop any questions in on the chat and uh, Leo and I will do our best to answer them as we go through the course of this broadcast. I've seen a few of you hosting there already as well, so hello to everybody that has joined us for what should be a very exciting, indeed, 60 minutes of racing, but we're still waiting for the main names and times to come in. And are we expecting, Leo, any surprises in this qualifying? And by surprises, I mean maybe those who don't anticipate being at the front being a little bit braver with their banker lap than some of the more established names. Uh, that might be the case, actually, but obviously at this point we don't know yet uh, who's in that position, who's trying to follow that strategy. Um, practice times showed that especially Cody, Nikola, Latkowski and Leonard Karten were fastest on pace there, so the two of the guys still look out for now in the next couple of minutes, uh, but obviously uh, the grid is stacked. A lot of people can, can move up the grid here. Um, so it's just about keeping it clean, getting that lap done. And as we see, first people coming down the back straight to Dettinger Höhe and Cody Nikola Latkowski is in the slipstream of another car. Yeah, this is going to be critical for the lap time in the Porsche. One of the uh, surprise choices, I think, for the front runners coming into this race yeah. based on what we've seen over yeah. the course of the championship so far. Actually bump drafting, Juval <laughs> Rosen, that is, I think. so. Uh, both kind of gaining time for that, maybe even some teamwork coming in here, I could imagine. It's interesting oh. to see the, uh, the, the the willingness to take risk at this stage in the race by doing yeah. that sort of thing. It can pay off, but it can also backfire spectacularly if you get it wrong, can't it? But I'm also really impressed that um, people are also working together here. So yeah. normally, um, being lone wolves on the racetrack, you, you find an ally basically to push each other in qualifying. As Cody Nicola puts up 30.8, which should be a decent first lap. But here, Julian Kunze, third place, over two seconds off. I think that time by Latkowski is going to be really tough to beat. And of course, we've still got two minutes, uh, sorry, three minutes and 20 seconds left on the clock. So if you start your time, before the checkered flag falls, you can then go and complete that lap. So there's still not on race room actually. Ah, time goes to zero. That's the thing here. Oh, it's game time over. Goes to zero. It's game over. So that's actually interesting for strategy as well, isn't it? Do you get out of pit lane straight away, or do you buy yourself that bit of time so you're crossing the line at the right time? Which is all these things our drivers have to put through their mind while also delivering on what is basically a one-shot shot. And who seems to have a really good shot is Leonard Koch, who had two really good first sectors um, as you ride on board with him through Schwalbenschwanz. Um, now it is a small carousel, people call it, coming up. Um, going through the concrete banking, maybe even tucking into a tiny bit of slipstream of the car ahead. And now through Galgenkopf, really important to, to keep the momentum going. 
you go close to the inside curb here and get maximum speed for the back straight to Dettinger Höhe. And that might actually be slipstream territory for Leonard Todd and definitely a time to watch now as he's moving towards the finish line. Yeah, that is perfect timing to catch the AMG Mercedes ahead of him for Kargan. So hopefully he'll stay out of uh, the danger zone coming in to the next section of corners. But again, this is so how much of that is planning? How much of that is look of the draw to meet your rival at that point of the racetrack? I'm not too sure. I mean, you know round about what kind of pace your, your opponents have, but at that point it's hard to calculate how, how far up his, his rear you will be going down to Dettinger Höhe, and that worked out perfectly for God. Um, Lukas Wallering that was that who, who moved aside kind of Martin got past going through the last corner and now we'll see where he crosses the line and it's second place 31.470 so not quite enough to get on terms with Cody Nikolai Lutovsky currently our provisional Paul Sitter Colin Blankenberg is in third position at 32.6 Seven seven, exactly the same time as P4 at this moment in time. So it's close at the front of the field. How, how crazy is that? We have a six and a <laughs> half minute lap and people put in the exact same lap time. That's incredible racing here. Yeah. And that just shows that these drivers, regardless of the mark the car that they're racing with, regardless of any of the outside factors, getting the absolute most out of these cars are in terms of lap time. As Christian Orban, I think he won't be able to finish the lap. He's in the Landsgarten territory now, so uh, the little jump here, dipping into uh, double right-hander, but he's too far away from the finish line. I think he's also the last car on track, so um, we can call it a day for qualifying. As we see our results, Cody Nicolala taking Paul at Nordschleife for the final. Fantastic, still starting from the very best position possible heading into the 60 minute race and we've spoken already about how valuable is it for qualifying. It's valuable not to throw the car off the circuit and compromise your event before it even starts. But pole position is where you want to be. You want to be dictating the pace, don't you? Exactly, especially on this track um, where you won't see a lot of overtakes. It's probably going to be the case of, of one big train flying through the track and then uh, towards the end of the race it's going to boil boil down um, yeah really good stuff Andreas qualifying bit of a breathless affair plenty of drivers uh, driving big laps there again from your point of view as somebody who's maybe not necessarily an experienced sim racer yourself what is it what kind of impression do you get from these drivers pushing these cars to the absolute limit moments away from potential disaster. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it was just like uh, also thinking about the strategy, what we see at uh, at Cody uh, with uh, with the uh, driving behind. Bump and draft. Yeah. Bump draft, yeah. <laughs> thanks. Um, and uh, yeah, for Cody, um, yeah, I, 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 would, I would say a little bit as expected that he is under the top uh, three, but now he's, uh, he's the, uh, the leader. He will start on, on, on pole. But also from uh, Leonard Carton and uh, Julian Kunze, where we performing quite well. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward. And this close that they are yeah. at, the, at the timing for the qualifying, it seems to be a very great and very uh, impressive race. So I'm looking forward to it. You kind of touched on a really interesting point there, Andreas, about the bump drafting. And we spoke, didn't we, in the live about the, the potential to gain an advantage from Slipstream. Pole position is the front of the track, clear track in front of you. Is that actually a disadvantage in this opening lap? Because you're vulnerable then to the rest of the field slipstreaming and potentially putting you under pressure as the race goes green. Um, it might be, actually. But I personally think also how, the, how we saw the, last, the race last year play out. Um, it's going to be all about positioning yourself for that final lap, for the final 10 minutes of Nordschleife action. Um, as we saw, um, it was a bit of a fight around who's who's going into the last lap first, who's second, and then you you try to give it your all for that one try down the back straight, the Döttinger Höhe, going around the outside or the inside, whatever your opponent's giving you, um, and trying to stick it up there. That's the only real opportunity I see. If not, if Cody has the pace, he will be able to to maybe get enough of a gap between himself and the other cars so he can run away with it. Um, 
I don't know how that will play out. How big of a difference is that there, there is between the players of the drivers? Well, you get in this commentator game easily. Stay on the fence. Don't know how it's going to play out. So it could go <laughs> both ways and you're never wrong. But Andreas, I want to ask you before, because we're not far away now from hitting the track for the race. Heading into this one from head office at NGK Spark Plug, what were you hoping for from this race? What, what are you looking for from this event? Is it just a case everybody putting on a good show? And how do you hope this one pans out over the next hour? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, as, as I said, um, the, we are basically, as I'm responsible also for the EMEA region, we are basically looking that most of the regions and a lot of people from all the countries are part participating. But uh, as we said, coming to the final, it's the Nürburgring Nordschleife. And we are looking forward to have a really great race and uh, so many people participating and uh, also main from many countries. And uh, really looking forward to to the race and to a great experience also. And as we has uh, as we have some uh, some changes to the first eSport Cup, with some cars that you can choose in the lottery that we have, uh, uh, um, and um, this is also a big advantage that we have this time for eSport Cup. Well, we'll find out in a few moments' time as we're about to go racing. But before we do that, one just to remind you all, you can join us on uh, YouTube, on Race Room Racing Experience YouTube channel. We're also on their Facebook channel and the NGK Spark Plug YouTube channel. Or you can join the conversation on social media. Hashtag Ignite the Track to get involved in the discussions and all the news and the excitement that comes from this fabulous eSport competition courtesy of NGK Spark Plug. And engines are revving already the lights flashing on screen we've got just under one minute to go before we start any last shouts in fact we are starting now in fact so there we go the race is underway already and that is a great start from fourth position or comes in there just about making his way through the field and making a couple of early places up and this is immediately the opportunity isn't it Leo for the drivers to get a quick advantage and find their way through some of the slower start of traffic because standing starts are not what you normally get in a GT3 car so it's a bit of a step into the unknown for these drivers. Yeah especially the, the Porsche 911 here with, with all the weight, weight on the rear axle it's got a bit a bit of an advantage at the start standing start on race room and as we saw Yuval was perfectly um, used that to his advantage going past Leonard Martin but as you mentioned Yu Yang Kunze also with a perfect start gaining two or three positions there and as we can see no sacrifices yet no one died <laughs> someone mentioned in chat no one died so pretty clean start just what, what you want to see for this long of a race yeah fantastic stuff great driving from all of the drivers on track to keep it nice and clean as we stand i'm glad everybody was a little bit sharper to when the lights were going to go green than i were in the box completely missed that one but we got there in the end now and we're looking back from our race leader currently in third position converted that pole position into an early race lead but as we spoke about in the pre-show vulnerable now to the slipstream on the cars behind and it's a little bit like nascar racing isn't it if you get offline if you start to be overtaken or you're on a suboptimal line how tight this field is it might be one two three four cars making their way past yeah you can't be caught sleeping here in the north <laughs> especially with this level of driving um uh, what just caught my eye is that colin blankenburg who, who really Put on a great performance in qualifying, someone who really surprised me with a third position there. Uh, ended up in P6, he was the car kind of struggling off the line there, so uh, that's probably the biggest loser for now, at least for the starting phase of the race now. Yeah, a little bit of wheel spin off the line can be critical in these close competitions. We're looking there at a Leonardo Karting now. Third position at this moment in time in the Audi. The Audi's proven to be a quick car over the course of this competition. It'll be interesting to see how that stacks up against the two race leading Porsches ahead. And of course, Julian Kunzer in the AMG Mercedes holding on to fourth position as well. So, as you were coming through the first section of this beautiful Nürburgring Noise Life, a lot, we're riding on board with the uh, Audi of fifth position man at this moment in time. And where's the next opportunity, Leo, are in mistakes, to have a realistic shot at taking an overtake at this stage? Um, yeah. Uh, no pressure for me to give you that one. Put you on the spot there for me to tell me. I did, yeah. 
<laughs> I, I really think the next, yeah, like from here on now, like you might be able to, to if you if you get a better run out of the, the back work, which was the last corner we went through the right hander. With a bit of slipstream, you might go up inside. Oh, as we can see, into work work. A bit of fighting around the B21 region. Le Gravy against Linus Grise, there must be. And now going uphill, if you have a bit more momentum than the guy ahead, uh, going into the slipstream, you might be able to go side by side into the fast left and into the mood over which we saw before in qualifying. And again, it's always, like we said, and I'm sure we're going to continue to say, it's about the bravery pillars again too wide, but the AMG just doesn't quite have enough grunt off of the corner and has to drop back in and behind the Audi. Talking about brave, I think Riese put two wheels on the grass there. Kevin Estra Esk, it's really Kreivy also going wide on the exit there. So, uh, as we can see, people are giving it their all here. Yeah, that's what we love to see. The cars are the heaviest, they're at the coolest at this moment in time as well. The tyres not quite up to temperature, the fuel still got to get burnt off. It's one hour worth of racing in. I want to ask you a question, Leo, that I, I meant to ask you before we came on air, but it slipped my mind. An hour on one tank. That's going to be, for some of these drivers, a little bit tight, is it? Or are we quite comfortable? Um, from my memory, I think uh, our race and race room normally it's these, these short, spicy sprint races. So this is definitely a longer one. Uh, I haven't done one myself in quite some time. But I think you should be able to make it without refueling. That also means that your tires stay on at the end, until the end of the race. Um, which normally in those short sprint races isn't too much of a problem, but I can imagine that especially towards the 40 minute, 50 minute mark that uh, tire wear also might become a factor and uh, um, the Porsche always is a bit harsh on the rears because of the weight distribution of the car. As Georgi Georgiev goes really wide in YouTube corner there, touching the gravel on the outside. Yeah, so uh, tire wear might really come into play at the end of the race for certain cars. And I think it's doubly important to tire wear on this track as well, isn't it? Because on a quote-unquote traditional circuit, you lose grip, you lose a bit of lap time, you have to go defensive. On this track, you lose 5, 10, 15, 20% of your grip. Dangerous corners become wildly dangerous all of a sudden, and it's very, very easy to make a mistake, isn't it? So the drivers are really almost got to manage a living, breathing thing over the course of the race. It's not just about going quickly. It's about, it's almost rally-esque, because there we go, we see a very, very dangerous wow. move. Gets the position taken just about, but that one, sir, it's a little bit more luck than judgment, me thinks. Linus is definitely on the mission. He's, <laughs> he's taking no prisoners, he's giving it his all, you can see. He's through the grass now, with the force of one single lap. That's, that's something we will talk about later on, I'm sure. Um, he wants to have a goodie bag, I guess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> quite definitely. Um, but as we can see, especially at the front now, you can see these gaps are slowly starting to grow. And um, especially behind Leonard Parton, Julian Kunz is already 1.6 seconds away, and that's out of the slip window. So um, the top three, Latkowski, Rosen, Parton, uh, they have this first kind of breakaway now. Yeah, Lukowski was under a little bit of pressure there from the slipstream, but luckily had just enough of a, an advantage of a Rosen behind. But again, that's that slipstream we've spoken about. If you're Lukowski at the front of the field, you're going to be feeling that pressure quite heavily now, aren't you? And it's, it's difficult, I would imagine, as a driver, not to start defending a little bit too hard or defending where it's not necessary. And the more you defend, the slower you go, the slower you go of the field are snapping at your heels. I think especially like these guys there, there are no new people for sim racing. Latkowski, Kart, Rosen, those are people who've been in the esports scene before now so uh, I'm sure all of them are aware that um, now is the best t point in time to really build a gap with the guys back further back and that also means working together to some degree so uh, you yourself can have a chance at the win later on, not get others involved. You don't need those other three, four people getting involved fighting for the victory. So that's why I think all of them are deciding now is a good position to break away and just let the three of us get to work at later on in the race. Yeah, absolutely, all these tactics that go to mind. And Andreas is still with us, actually. So I'll have a quick word and throw to you, Andreas, if I can. What are you thinking of the track action that we've seen so far? It's been uh, rather excited at the front of the field, hasn't it? 
Totally, yeah. I'm, I'm very happy that there are no big crashes <laughs> that are happening at the beginning, so this is something I uh, was a little bit afraid of, that something could happen at the beginning. But uh, yeah, also looking at the first uh, uh, Garden, uh, uh, Cody, uh, uh, um, and Rosen and uh, Leonard Garten, it's so close at the, at the, at the top, so yeah, it's very great, great race, uh, very great race that, that we see here. So all the people are that qualified are coming together and then, then you see what, what happens on the racetrack. So the best racers that we have and, and on the Indic Days Park are, are there and it's a great race that, that we see and they are also all close together and it's, it's, it's very it's also fun to watch here. Yeah. We see Morris Zapp here going head to head with uh, Steph Kramer. Steph Kramer was one of the drivers who qualified the series through the point system uh, so we had the four qualifying rounds at Spa at Aragon at Dubai and uh, at the Hungaro ring of each of the rounds the top four drivers qualified immediately for the final and then we had another 16 drivers joining them through a point system like in your average racing or sim racing championship so at the end of the day we have 32 qualified racers 30 of them made it on the server and are uh, going to work as we can see as Kramer's really gets close to Zabdir's rear right now. Yeah, Zabdir's under pressure at the moment. He's doing well to keep the car neat and tidy, but Kramer, he's got the, the body language of that AMG Mercedes at this moment in time, suggests that he's very, very keen to make his move, get past the Audi, and start closing the field in front. And it's such a long lap, so many corners, he can't really afford to drop too much time because quickly you fall out of that lead train don't you and that's the problem that uh, Steph's got at this moment in time and that Audi is probably the widest Audi you're going to see in Germany at this moment in time is look how close they get it will he find an opportunity all we can see is the rear splitter and this is critical moments that these two drivers one small mistake from the car ahead and that is two cars off into the barrier Kramer's just shows his nose to the inside not really an opportunity uses the grass on corner exit as well as he tries to carry the speed into the next section of racetrack to get that momentum but the Audi a little bit neater a little bit calmer is just pulling away at the front of this pack and Leo while these two squabble look who we've got behind We've got the rest of the field closing in to make a two-way fight very quickly into a four-way battle. Yeah, your George Gorgiev, who, is, who also has plenty of support in the chat, I can see, um, pulling up from behind. He's closing the gap. As we've mentioned, people are fighting, people are getting close. He actually just lost the position to Sebastian Rey, the commentator's curse, <laughs> also present here. Um, yeah, as you can see, even though the Norch life is such a technical and Behind the track, we still have a lot of movement, a lot of swaps of positions going on in the, in the grid. And um, asking the chat guys, uh, who are you supporting the most? Who is there a little fan club of, of Mr. Georgiev or are there other people you're supporting? Let us know. Yeah, it'd be great to hear from everybody in the chat. So please do let us know as we're looking now. This is 15th position. So there's racing, there's little pockets of drivers all over the circuit, isn't there? They're squabbling for position, but it's almost like a high-speed game of chess, isn't it? It's not a tradition, I've said this before, but it really does bear repeating. It's not a traditional racetrack. You've got to pick your battles, and you've got to pick your moments, haven't you? And be confident in a move when you make it. Otherwise, hello barriers for you. Yeah, and I think Colin Blancourt's car, um, as you can see at the front, uh, yeah, right there, the, the, the hood is a bit uh, squabbled up, you could say. Um, I think uh, he's had a bit of contact with the walls. Um, starting from third position, that's definitely not the way he wanted the race to go. Um, I think it's like he's in a really tough spot now, because after such an incident, the race is still long. There's still a lot of, a lot of racing to do, and you can still work your way up the field with the pace he has shown until now. But um, mentally, after such a crash, or after, like short period of disappointment in a race you really need to get back in there get back into focus as Floyd struggles out of the, the small carousel covers the inside line and now they go on the back straight side by side almost yeah, Blankenberg maybe carrying a little bit of damage but it doesn't seem to be holding up at this stage as that Mercedes looks very 
very mobile behind the back of the Porsche, looking one way and then the other. Now the big grunt and go power of the AMG Mercedes and some slipstream for good measure is also helping out. Well, now there's fight. This is back into our position, our fight for positions one and two. So Rosen still, as you were, but following in the wheel tracks of race leader Makovsky just in front of us. And this is a very, very critical moment now because the longer that you follow the car in front, the more that you're using it with tyres, the more that you're putting pressure on your car as well. So it's a double whammy, isn't it? You want to find a way past. You don't want to take too much out of the car at this stage. And Andreas, question for you. In this position, how would you play that if you were in second position? Do you hold on and see if an opportunity presents itself or you go for it? <laughs> You know what I'm thinking uh, is that maybe he is uh, that Rosen has the same strategy maybe as Attila Dina because he told me that his strategy is to follow the first and then try to try to try to win the race. But for me, it's also driving this this bumpy driving. It's just like you you need to have a reaction time that is I don't know. It's, it's awesome to see how they managed this so um oh there's someone going out there big package of cars around v20 v21 there and that must have been luca wittrich going a bit wide in the hansbach area then uh, but things are, are back in order back in the train going up to, to the famous flugplatz one of the two jumping opportunities on the nordschleife where the car literally loses a bit of contact to the ground um Roland Sen, one of the fan favorites from the chat, a uh, bit, of, bit of time for himself, you could say, on the track. He's got a bit of a gap to the front, a bit of a gap to the back, so um, really got to focus, push, and catch up to the guy ahead now. And we see him uh, really calmly navigating the car. And, you know, actually, you've kind of answered the question I was just going to ask you. Isn't it remarkable? see how calm some of these drivers are calm both in terms of how much input they're putting into the wheel but also just an, an expression on their faces as well anybody who's normal when it comes to not esport drivers like myself and probably andreas as well we would sort of be clenching our teeth and holding onto the wheel tight to a concentration face sweating yeah these guys it's just like they sat watching the people show on television yeah. it's, it's a little moment for them it's like how is that is that just a mentality of that kind of experience and confidence? Do you know that you will be filmed? <laughs> yeah, also <laughs> or true. Zoom yeah, is on. Exactly. I think it's like it's a lot of, of concentration really. You don't if you focus on, on performing on track, there is not a lot of space in your head to do to, to other stuff. You really need to put all all assets you have together and focus and bring them onto the track. And also I think uh, Bruno Spengler meant mentioned it in the podcast or something um, that, that sim racing actually because you don't have the physical movement of the car because there is not really a lot of stuff distracting you 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 have to you can and you have to put a hundred percent of your focus on track that's also what what makes it a bit more demanding mentally in that sense to, to real racing obviously not in all ways but in that kind of sense racing really is a demanding esport. Yeah, absolutely. We just uh, saw a little lock up there from Yaroslav Dmitriev down in the uh, low 20s as we're going back once again to Jerval Rosen. Second position, a little bit further away on this occasion from our race leader, Lukowski, in first place. But again, that's more about the racetrack and the accordion the defense. There we go, he loses. Oh. Rosen loses the rear of the car. Spins it around, contact with the barrier. He's got to be cautious now on the rejoin. Make sure he doesn't collect one of his rivals. But that is a massive disaster for Rosen. Second position, down in the seventh. Almost collects one of the AMG Mercedes as well for good measure. And there is damage on that Porsche. But more to the point, he will be kicking himself for that simple yeah, you mistake. See, you can see the emotion. Yeah. Oh, he's furious. How do you recover, Leo? How do you recover? I'm sure you've never made a mistake, sir, in your career. But imagine that you did. How do you recover so quickly in the heat of a race I've after done, that? I've done way too many of them, to be honest. <laughs> but, um, yeah, honestly, you can, there is no time to, to kind of get back your composure. 
thing is, the thing you have to do is really try to, to find your mental way back onto the track. Uh, if not, if that, if that thought of you spinning there keeps being in your head, you have a problem for the next couple of minutes. 41 is still left. Um, but the interesting dynamic that I just wanted to mention before you were spun is um, I was checking the uh, Delta times on our screen here and um, I saw that Eva for the Nicola at front was losing a bit of time now because uh, Leonard Carton who was over a second away from Yuval Rose before uh, he was catching up up until that corner so um, either the, the Audi is a bit strong in the first part of the track or Porsche or in that case Cody might not be the car might be a setup issue um, starting to struggle a bit so um, that's also a point we have to keep an eye on that uh, kind of the, 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 uh, the dynamic of the race changes uh, with car balance and stuff developing over over the time of the race. You're actually you're talking about setup and car balance touches on a good point. For this grand final, setups are open for these drivers, aren't they? So exactly. what does that mean? What can you change? What how will that impact what goes on in the terms of the balance and the the life of the car? Um, like similar to a lot of other sims into real life you can change uh, a lot of stuff on the suspension so dampers springs uh, arbs um, adding to that obviously aerodynamics the rear wing which uh, is a big topic down here in the back straight um, ride height for example is also affected the differential uh, traction control settings um, so overall on this track i would prefer a package that's really performing well as you always make some ground going back into sixth position. I would really prefer a package that's really performing well in the fast parts of the track, especially because your only overtaking opportunity will be the jetting over yeah. and some of the, the smaller overtaking opportunities in case your opponent makes a mistake. Those are also high speed sectors, so you really want to be on the fast side, top end speed, that's where you want to be. You can kind of cope with the, with the loss of traction in the slower parts of the circuit. And would you be thinking, uh, in terms of your setup, about keeping the car alive over the course of the stint. Do you want to take all the goodness from it at the beginning of the stint, or do you want it to be stronger towards the end? How how would you play that one without giving too many secrets away, of course? Um, I think uh, that you actually try to, to have a balance. I mean, as we see, you can try to run away at the start of the race, but at the same time, people might get up at the end of the race, then if, you, if your car goes down, Good. As we see, 22 going for a bit of a fight there. Yeah, so you really, I think, a balanced approach is always the best thing. So you don't have this major drop towards the end of the race, or you lose a lot of ground at the start of the race, lose track position. You don't want to do that as well. You want to be in the mix all the race uh, and put it together in the last couple of laps. We've got a little bit of a fight going on here now. We're riding on board with Enzo Filippo in 12th position. Trying to find a way past Yogiev just ahead. So, Aude versus Aude, too wide. Down the back straight. This is not going to be a very nice place to be. Shooting there we points. go. Great driving by Georgiev just to allow, recognise when the move has been done and allow his rival enough racing space. And that puts him under pressure now from Daniel Berker as well. So, this is what we're talking about, Leo, isn't it? You lose one position, you get off track or you get off line. And then all of a sudden, like a train, boom, 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 everyone's passed. Yeah. And that, now Foxhall also, before the, the fast left-hander is named Schwedenkreuz, those are parts of the track where if, if, oh, like if one of the guys doesn't like dip out of the move, it's going to end in tears. And as we saw, uh, Mr. Georgiev, uh, he really, he showed a bit of, 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 of racing intelligence yeah. there, backing out from the move. To, to keep his chances, but also in the same sense, the chances of, of, his, of his opponent alive, really. Yeah, absolutely. So 12th position is the reward at this moment in time. Daniel Berker behind in the AMG Mercedes as well. So Gorgiev currently in 12th place, lost that position to Filippo just ahead. Can he find a little bit of lap time in the locker and close back up again to the uh, Audi ahead of him? Or will he get swallowed up with this nice little fight? And just at the back, you can see touching the grass there is Colin Blankenberg down in 14th position, carrying that damage, started at the head of the field. So Blankenberg recovering, but not quite enough 
at this moment in time to get himself back into that top 10 position and with it an NGK goodie bag for his participation as well so work still to do for these three cars and this has got a it's got all the hallmarks hasn't it as a fight that's going to continue on and on just like this one a little bit further down the running order the 25th position Yaroslav Dmitriev who we're looking at on board oh no in fact it's Peter Daniel who we're looking on board now the jet driver and like a bit of a theme coming into this race it's like the gaps at the front are a bit spreading out now and as we can see around these this P10 P15 P20 P26 there's still a lot of action going on people are still packed and that's also maybe a thing because there's a bit of a pace difference someone in front is backing up the rest of the pack and then people are trying to get past people get stuck in a bit of a traffic jam as we can see there's eight cars in one shot here in the north life which is something you do not see too often if you can Absolutely, so Daniel now looking to the outside, down in 26th place, doesn't quite have enough room to get that one done. We're back with Colin Blankenberg, and actually he has got past Yorgiev. So what happened there? We didn't see on the screen, but Blankenberg was in 14th position, now moves himself up into P13. So the charge continues to recover from that early bit of drama that we, well, that we noted at the beginning of the race and next man up the road is Daniel Berke, the Austrian driver in 12th position. So Blankenberg still has a little bit of time left on his hands, not quite the halfway marker. Andreas, you've had 25 minutes just under a racing so far. Meeting your expectations, sir, for a grand finale? Absolutely, I'm just checking on uh, Rosen and he's now on uh, fifth place. I think he was on seventh place, but he's fighting I think his way back, something that I really like to like to watch, and uh, yeah, I think uh, yeah, Cody Cody is uh, um, is at the top, and he's as you uh, said at the beginning, Leo, he's just making a little bit distance between him and the second place, and he's trying to get him more distance, uh, more distance done, and he's uh, really good, really good on the track, and uh, but as we said at at, uh, at the beginning. If you, you need to go to the, your absolutely limit, but if you overtake as uh, as uh, Rosen did, sometimes happens then you slip away and then it's some places are gone and uh, but it's uh, absolutely meet uh, meet my expectations for for the grand final yeah in the north. Now that you mentioned the gap between uh, Lotkowski and Karten, uh because I was checking the timing screens here uh, the last couple of seconds, I think. Um, the cart had a bit of a mistake or something in his last lap. Um, the lap before was a 35.0 and now he's got Julian Kunze right up his back was over a second slower the lap before so uh, I'm sure that there was something that happened and also that top speed difference seems a bit over the top. I don't know if it's damaged his car or something. Uh, it's all too easy for Kunze down the straight, even with Good the fit. slipstream, wasn't it? So uh, Carton, uh, maybe, in a little bit of trouble at this stage in the race, was in the fight for the race victory, now drops himself down to third position. We'll keep our eye on that one as it unfolds to see if Julian Kunze manages to pull away or if Carton can get back in contention, but that's a frustration, isn't it, the yeah. Audi driver? Let's see what the timing sheet says now that the cross start finish. Martin seems to have had an invalid lap, which means he was off track at some part, which would make sense with him losing that much time. But um, uh, also because you mentioned Colin Blankenberg making that good recovery this lap. Um, the lap before he was over two seconds quicker than Georgiev and Berka, so he's on a mission right now. His pace hasn't suffered, and uh, oh, oh. racing action is also not suffering here around P20. There is, they're going free wide into <laughs> into Tiergard. That's just like getting a handful of stones and throwing them in water. They're just everywhere, aren't they? That must be so incredibly difficult for a driver to keep an eye on where all your rivals are on the racetrack while making sure you don't go bouncing into some walls as well. And at this moment in time, the uh, Mercedes holds on at the front of the field in 20th position. But these guys need to temper this enthusiasm, I think, Leo, at this moment in time, because this has got Teary, teary, cray, cray, written all over it. Almost lost the reader. But what I think is incredible, like even though this is the Norch life and no margin for error, yeah. there is no, barely any, like we haven't seen any crashes on screen so far. I don't want to curse it. I hope 
commentator's curse, fingers crossed, <laughs> but it's been a really clean race so far. That's what's really popping into my eye here. Well, I was I was thinking about how many times if I were in the race, I, I, so. I will be overtaken. Oh. Mario Zapier oh. off the track, oh. and that's a high-speed part, so as we can see, the rear wing is a bit uh, damaged, you could say. Um, Let's hope That's he a can very bent car, isn't it? Let's hope he can get back up the pace, but uh, the rear wing definitely doesn't. Oh yeah, the rear is really loose, so probably loss of downforce there. And he will be struggling to to keep the car on track here and maybe get a repair stop in. Yeah, that's a real shame for Marius there. He was running in in contention for a top ten position, so shall we say? But obviously, uh, a mistake somewhere around the lap has led to. Hard contact with something that is immovable, and sadly, the Audi is the car that paid the price. So, hopefully, as you say, he can use these next few corners just to understand where the car is currently, how safe or not it is to continue without making a repair. But sadly, in terms of the important positions, whoa, we lose the rear end there. Something's very unbalanced at the back whoa. of the car, and very lucky, in fact, not to collect any of the uh, remaining so, field. But yeah, he gets off the track. Yeah, as we've mentioned, the, the rear wing was probably extremely damaged and that's why his rear was so loose coming out of Arenberg going down Foxville. Um, so probably that was also the issue here into Metzger's head. As we can see, Leonard Parton is not backing off of the rear of Julian Kunze. He's uh, sticking to, to, the, to the rear end of the AMG Mercedes. Um, and I'm curious to see if both of both over to two, um, we'll keep fighting or if they will work together kind of to close up the gap to Cody because if they keep fighting the gap from Cody to Julian already so it's at 3.8 seconds so more fighting might mean the end to their hopes at the overall victory here. Yeah that's a substantial gap to try and overcome but it's reassuring to see that Carton whatever the dramas were the lap previous seem to have gone away now and that Audi is very firmly back on pace once again. Julian comes at just ahead, so that's a fight that's going to keep charging on, but 3.7 seconds is still the gap, and that is a big ask if you're racing, as you say, solo, but if they can work together, do a little bit of bump drafting, share the slipstream over these long straights here at the Nürburgring Neuschleife, and there is a chance within the course of the next 29 and a half minutes, they can get back in contention, but you're a race driver, Leo, you don't work together, you see a position, you go take it, don't you? normally but <laughs> if there's a chance to work together to get a chance at the position ahead especially if it's the overall victory we've got a weekend at the Nürburgring Nordschleife a 24 hour race on the line here so I wouldn't mind working together with someone to at least have a shot at that on track uh, Leonard Carton also someone who's who's been in esports competitions for for a bit of time now one of the younger guys who's really been making a name for himself and like I think He's one of the guys who really needs one of these, these bigger success moments to really unlock the next level, you could say. Something like push your confidence. That's also a big part here. Not just the real racing wave, where you need the confidence and your ability in the car. It's the same here in, in sim racing. If you know you can do it, you can do it again and again and over again. I was thinking about uh, uh, Leonard Carton and Julian Kunze are also at the Hugaro ring first finishers so maybe they get used to each other get a little bit of <laughs> know what the other one <laughs> what, what they can expect from the, from the other one yeah that's actually a fact but like over time if you race the same competitors yeah. over and over again you kind of know what to expect from them you yeah. know is, is he like more of a of a reserve driver who, who takes his chances if they are there is it, is it someone who will use the who will use the baseball bat and <laughs> and bash open the door if there is one um, so you kind of get to know the people who are around on track if you race them regularly. As we, can, as we look further back in the field of Rokus to be who is defending P20 into the Brinchen area right now. That's actually uh, Petter Daniel that we see in 21st place. Just gets the yeah, job done, steals up the inside. A little bit of grass for good measure as well. The gardener here, the Neuschleifer, will not be too keen to see. Slick tires running over the grass, but it did the job very nicely indeed. Thank you very much for Petter Daniel up into 20th position. And now, once again, Leonard Carter in the Audi, not struggling for straight line speed anymore, but doesn't have the legs on the big grunt and go AMG Mercedes in front, even with a slipstream. 
that Audi just missing those last couple of miles per hour in order to get alongside. So this is really difficult now. If you are Leonard Carton in third position, you can't rely on the draft passed on the straights. You're going to have to get this one done in the twisties. And that is a whole bunch of extra risk that you've got to throw on the table, isn't it? Yeah, and I'm wondering right now if, as we see uh, Georgia once again, he's really been in the middle of the action today. <laughs> I wonder if he's still struggling with the rear wing. I hope he can keep the car on track now. But it looks like he's behind Kilian Kluit. Um, Dörtinger Höhe, but also doesn't seem to make the pass into the Tigard Hohenrein Chicane area. Moves out of the slipstream with no chance, really. Um, I'm wondering if Parton um, really was lifting a bit to, to stay behind Prince or if that was his maximum top speed. Because if that was his maximum top speed, he's in big trouble now. Um, he will barely have a chance to get uh, Quincer, but really my feeling is that he's, uh, I know that he's a smart driver, and my feeling is that he, he maybe was lifting a bit, so to uh, not cause any tension, to not cause, you know, also Quincer, the feeling, you're, you're safe, I'm not attacking you, um, we're staying behind on purpose. And I think that's quite an important message to give to your rival. If you do want to work together, you want to give them confidence to not slam the door shut, to say yes, let's work together for a lap or two, let's see if we can do something about that gap in front. But at the moment, 3.9 seconds is the deficit to our race leader. So whatever they're doing is not working to close the gap down yet. But as we enter the second half of this race, this is when we're talking about setups, isn't it? And developing the car to come alive over the course of the As you start to burn off fuel with Porsche, we know, becomes a little bit spicy, I think it's fair to say, when it's running light on fuel. That changes the balance as well. So all these aspects come together. And what we've seen up to now, all the notes that we've taken in this first 35 minutes of racing, very easily they're thrown away. The balance and the racetrack changes as the race progresses. Yeah, especially uh, that now that I saw on the timing streets that Hart was actually matching Latkowski last lap. Unser wasn't, so I'm pretty sure Hart could go faster, but now right now he's in the weird spot. If, if he wants to go past, he starts fighting, he starts losing time. Um, Unser isn't faster than Latkowski as well, so he's struggling to close the gap, so he's in a bit of a, of a weird situation now with 25 minutes. It might still sound like a lot of time, but with this level of competition, this level of driving, um, I think it's going to be hard to close a gap now if something decisive doesn't happen within the next couple of corners. But if something happens, as we learned, <laughs> then maybe the race is open again. <laughs> something might always happen. Yeah. And that's exactly what I was going to say to you. We've already seen it in the front of the field, Andreas, haven't we? That one small mistake, yeah. even on your own, even under no attack from those around you, can very quickly make a good position a very, very poor position. So although uh, Lukowski has a comfortable lead, one snatch of a break from too deep, one heck of a curb too hard, one ever so slightly enthusiastic press of the loud pedal, you could be talking to Armco Barrier very quickly indeed, can't you? Someone who is really eager to not make a mistake now, Sidan Gunai. Uh, right behind me, I neck both also veteran names in the race room esports. Sidan uh, Gunai, I remember race with him in the Remus GT3 Championship. Uh, they're both really fast drivers, and as we can see, they're going head to head. Both green AMG Mercedes uh, going up the hill, but. Um, now is not the time for an overtake, I think. Uh, he's going to wait for the right opportunity in one of the later parts of the track and uh, look for a decisive move there. And that gentleman is the definition of a commentator's nightmare. Two exactly delivered cars in close competition with each other. So hopefully something changes soon and there's a little bit of breathing space between these two to make our job a little bit easier as we're riding on board the back of the sixth position car, Mihail Neg currently holds that position. Behind you can see Sinan Gunier in seventh place, trying to find a way past it. Again, so, so difficult, chaps. Exactly the same car. The only difference is how you tread it over the course of this race and the setup you have got on it. And Andreas, question to you. If you were racing, would you want to be racing against the same mark that you're driving so you know what you're up against? 
or would you want to be racing against something different and use that opportunity to assess where the strengths and weaknesses are? I would say I, I would I would try it out really to to have uh, to have something else. So I would try it out. Yeah. But as you said, it's, it, maybe you don't know how the setup of the other car is, and this is something that be very interesting and. Maybe you learn what the other guy is doing to his car as you are fo following him or uh, yeah, maybe in the front, then you know how uh, he changes setup. And um, if you pick up your, your own setup the best, then you will find out on the notch life. As we've seen last year, even the same car is going to have very different setups, very different strengths and weaknesses. And uh, putting a different mix of cars uh, just, just multiplies that really. And of course, Leo, it may be just a single driver in the cockpit for this next 60 minutes, but it's a whole team effort behind them as well, isn't it? So it's not just one person going out there doing it yourself. Tell me a little bit, because obviously you're part of Dur Esports. Going into a race like this, what kind of support network do you have around you? How does this, how does it work for an event of this calibre entering the race in terms of the prep? The setup. Oh, hello, well, oh. we've got a little bit of contact there. He goes yeah, right. and says hello to the barriers, but a light touch, a little wiggle, just to make sure things are going in the right direction. But back to my question, uh, Leo, if I can, please. Um, yeah, for example, Grisi is driving for Miniti Racing, just like uh, Sebastian Rie, who's also in the race. Um, I think they also picked the same car, if I'm right. Uh, yeah, now Rie picked the, picked the AMG Mercedes and Grisi the Audi, but normally. As, as, as close to Zerno, trying to get an advantage on the top of the team, but can't really make a stick around the He's outside. He's really fighting. <laughs> um, yeah, he will have to line up again and go for another try next lap as we are about to cross the finish line once again with the finish lap. Um, yeah, if you, if you have teammates, uh, there's obviously two factors. On the one hand, you, you, um, you exchange information, you know how fast your teammate is, which might help you if you're struggling in one part of the track. Um, you, you will find out at that point. Um, so you can work on, on kind of your weaknesses, driving-wise, but also setup-wise. Um, if you have two different cars, it might be difficult to, to help each other out. But for example, if, uh, if two drivers of the same team, like an AMG Mercedes, um, as Daniel goes for a lick down to Tecnoyo, but also has to back out of it. Um, if two drivers of the same team uh, pick the same car, you obviously can work together uh, on the setup. Um, for a race like this, where you have a few weeks of time before the race actually starts, um, especially in sim racing, where you've got unlimited testing time, you can put in so much work. I can remember for a GTM Esports, we put in hours and hours if the time was there. So, um, and working as a team of two, you always have the option to, to try different stuff at the same time, which really speeds up the working process. You get different ideas from other drivers who maybe have a throat. So, um, that really helps. For longer races, you might even need a race engineer. Like, right here, it's pretty straightforward. You, you don't have pit stops, no, refuel, no refueling, no new tires. But for endurance races, you might actually need racing engineers. I think I think some some of them are also interested of uh, what uh, what Cody has for a setup. I think <laughs> this yeah, is very really interesting because it's just it's just a, it's, a, it's a big gap. It's just going ahead and just being at the top. Gents, this is an interesting fight. So Rosen has got himself up oh. into fourth yes. position. That is the red Porsche that you see. We're looking through the windshield now of... Uh, we're looking through the windshield of... Nico yeah, Cernel. Nico Cernel at the moment. So Rosen, lit between the teeth, after that bit of drama that we saw earlier on, he's not let it get to him. He's not let it get his head down. He's absolutely on fire. So really, really good performance, making up for that mistake for you Val Rosa at this moment in time and does he have enough 16 seconds he needs to find so really the podium is completely out of the picture unless mitigating circumstances come in but this will be good for his confidence this will be good for his head won't it to know that he can recover and let's not forget this is a one-off race for prizes today 
there's, make no mistake, eSports people are watching this race and you must perform because opportunities will come if you keep putting in these good performances, won't they? Absolutely, you always want to present yourself on the best side. And I think you are, even though the gap in the front is now at 17 seconds with his wide margin with 17 minutes left. It's going to be tough for him to, to yeah. close that gap, but also slicing through the field like he just did, that's a really good feeling, that's really pushing your confidence. You know, I think you came back on track in P10, P9, you know you just literally went one or two seconds faster a lap than four or five drivers, and that's something that's really pushing your, your mentality. Let's take nothing away from Nico Cernel either. He is driving very, very well, finished third in the uh, third round of the championships. He got himself his automatic qualification here to this grand finale and not associated with the teams are racing for himself in this event. It's a very uh, respectable, very strong performance as we're looking once again at Petter Daniel in 18th position. So Petter's making his way up through the field as well. He was 20th, I believe, the last time we checked in with the uh, AMG Mercedes driver. Next up the list is this man, Luke Wertrich, currently in 17th place, but under all the pressure in the world. Can he hold on for the next 15 minutes and 47 seconds? I think that Mercedes has got a thing or two to say about that. And the two of them, they, they have quite some space to the front, about 20 seconds uh, until Georgi Georgiev, and uh, six to seven seconds behind Roku Sabiso. They have all the time and space in the world to, to find out who's the faster and the better of the two. You know what it's like. Give a little bit of a comfort blanket to a driver and they kind of almost go out of their way to ruin that for themselves and have a little bit of unnecessary contact. So we'll keep our eye on this battle as it continues to unfold here on the Nürburgring Neuschleife for the NGK Spark Plug Esports Championship Grand Finale. Make sure you drop us a line on our YouTube feed here on the Race Room Racing Experience YouTube channel, the NGK Spark Plug YouTube channel, and of course, the Race Room Facebook page as well. We'll do our best to give you a shout out if you drop us a question in, we'll try and answer them over the course of the next 14 minutes and change. And of course, hashtag Ignite the Track to follow the conversation on social media for all the news, drama, and feedback from what has been a sensational race. So, just under quarter of an hour left. Leo, has this one unfolded so far as you, as you expected as a, as a resident race room expert? Is it unfolded as you anticipated, knowing what to do about these drivers and their respective experience? Yeah, I think so. Uh, in the end, really, the, the, the veteran guys, the, the experienced esports drivers, um, top three, all of them, those, those were the three I would have picked for top three results as Carton is right up the back of Kunze, but once again, holding back, I think. We will, we will find out last lap if he was holding back or not, I think, by now. Um, it's too late to, to push for the lead now, so I guess Leonard's playing the long game here. This is something I'd like to ask you. When will he start to attack? Maybe only uh, will he attack only at uh, the last lap or maybe second to last strategy thing. I As think. we've seen last year with Attila, yeah. he, he attacked second to last lap because he knew he had top speed advantage. So it's really we can't tell right now because we don't have the information these guys have in their regard. But uh, yeah, so it's really in this case you can see the top five are all really experienced drivers who've shown themselves in multiple competitions. Yuval is someone who's bit new to the competitions and the neck for example but you also see that maybe with a bit more experience a mistake like that wouldn't have happened i mean he i'm sure he's he will be super frustrated and super eager to, to make his mistake right in the next race but he will learn from that and he will come back i'm sure yeah absolutely and carton now is as close as we've seen him at this part of the racetrack the audi trying desperately to fill the mirrors of the mercedes ahead what he really, really needs is for Kunzer to make a mistake. He give him an easy overtake. But Kunzer's been around so long in the race room, racing experience world. Mistakes don't come very often indeed. In fact, look, look how calm he is. 
just a nice easy day playing European Truck Simulator. We're not <laughs> rushing, we're just having a nice steady drop my payload off somewhere in Europe. It's not racing around the green hell in a GT3 car and that just goes to show how comfortable he is in his own performance, in his own car, in his own situation and I fear it's going to take something very special indeed for Leonard Carton to find a way past him. So was he was going through the foxhole like he was driving yeah, on the autobahn. Exactly, nice and he found it probably easier than the autobahn the way he was looking behind the wheel. Just so con serene, I think, is a good way to put it. But it's Unai and uh Luna are catching up Nick. Still fighting. What do you do? Going wide there, Nick. That's not the, the racing line you want to have for now of Boston now. It's really getting a bit chaotic up to Metzger's Met here. Is this tires starting to wear off now? Is this the car starting to fall away from the optimal balance? It might actually be the case now. 50 minutes, like, race room isn't that hard on tires, but um, with that distance we have here, it might actually be the case that you have some, some really recognizable differences in car balance, especially understeer wise, which would also explain why he went right, uh, went wide into the left end and I don't know there. And it's easier, of course, being the chaser rather than the defender, isn't it? Always. Because you can watch what your rival's doing. And Andreas, question for you on that one. What would you rather be in this situation? The guy at the front defending or the attacker? This is exactly the question that I want to ask you. <laughs> but I think uh, I would be the, the guy who is um, who's fighting behind. So waiting and then finding... Uh, the, the gap and then just overtaking so for me it's just like being behind and just checking and waiting for the right moment and then passing by so yeah in question to you leo what's your preference i always prefer attacking like you can especially maybe not on an orch life but a most track you can also get creative with the with the overtaking it's like you kind of see a, a pattern in the movements of your opponent you can see is he leaving a bit of a gap when he's, when he, where, he's where he's breaking? Maybe I can abuse that to, to launch an inside maneuver next lap or something. So I really like the part of observing and then trying my luck, getting the chance to go down the inside or outside. And uh, as mentioned in the chat, people can't wait for the Nürburgring 24. I'm sure the winner of this race also won't be waiting for it because he will be going to it. Oh. VIP tickets. Zöner gets really nervous on the rear there uh yeah vip tickets sx lounge 24 hours never drink for the winner of this race which is an incredible price something money can't buy yeah and that's uh, that's the key isn't it it's is something that money can't buy it's an experience that you will as a race car fan as a motor racing fan it is something that you will remember the yeah. rest of your days and we got a taste of that one with attila his video we saw in the build up of the show but it's really i mean andreas again you were there as part of that video. Tell us a little bit about what a potential winner would be like with experience with that prize. So um, I, uh, I need to say I was at the, at the Nürburgring also starting with um, I was 18 years old camping there <laughs> so this is something that I have in mind so driving with my own car there but uh, what you have to uh, the experience now is totally different you were in the lounge in the sx lounge you get something to eat something to drink you can go to the hotel have a rest coming back having uh, a walk through the box uh, through the paddock uh, paddock um, it's, it's a great experience so you it's as comfortable as it can be to be at the 24 hour race to be in a lounge we have access to something to eat, something to drink. You can enjoy all the time. And uh, yeah, as I said, having a rest, maybe one or two hours coming back, watching the race. And I always, uh, always need to say, it's so nice if the race starts, if the sun is going down and you see the, the brakes glowing. And, uh, it's, and what also to have a look at the track, what the people are creating there. Like campsites and fireworks, and the people, so many people are enjoying, and you see a real the petrol hat and racing fans over there, and uh, it's also part every time for me to go also to the campsite. Be really, I know if you have the opportunity to go to the lounge, it's cool, but also to have a look at the real campsite and walk around and seeing all the crazy people. Um, 
all the crazy people and all the petrol heads. Yeah. Martin still holding back here. So oh, okay. We will have two more laps. So our uh, lap is about six minutes and thirty-five. That was the last lap of Cody Nikola Latkowski. So he crossed the line before seven minutes. That means we will have two more laps. So um, from here on, it will get really interesting. But as you mentioned, Andreas, nothing matches Nürburgring Nordschleife at 24 hours when it comes to atmosphere and stuff yeah, like that. I think absolutely, especially coming from Germany, like for someone who's into motorsports, you need to go there. You need to go sure, there. Yeah. It's, it's a must-have and yeah. the experience to go there, have VIP to go there for free. That something like some small kids dream of, really. Yeah, absolutely, making memories, and they cannot put a price. And that kind of thing. Experiences are what make life such a rich tapestry. Uh, as we see someone there jumping. Is it's that up. their Filippo jumping down it lane? So maybe there's a little bit of drama as he made contact with the barriers as he's bailing out of this one. Maybe. Just on the outside of the top 11. So real, real shocker there in the final couple of laps. Maybe because it's a bit close with time, I don't know. Um, Maybe people miscalculated fuel. <laughs> that might actually be the yeah. case. Um, you had this last time, yeah. If, if, uh, one, if yeah. Cody is going much faster than people expected, um, and I know that with, with this kind of lap time, it gets close towards the end, six and a half minute lap time. Um, it might be the case that there was just a tiny miscalculation. And that's exactly what we're speaking about right at the very top of the show, isn't it? Is will these cars have? enough capacity to do a 60 minute flat chat stint of course no safety cars no virtual safety cars full course cautions all mandated pit stops we've seen Cernal now under sorry on the attack there we go Mercedes and the Audi and Cernal drops down into six positions so that's Gunne moves himself up once a little bit of a mover and a shaker towards the final the dying moments of this race and Cernal will be uh, getting himself back firmly in the slipstream he tries to stay with the Mercedes through these next few corners but we've seen this Leo time and time again that Audi just does not have quite the straight line speed of their rivals and it's making life people like Nico Cernal just a little bit more difficult than it needs to be to stage in the uh, third motor race as we from one AMG and Audi to another one just different colors this time around. Um, Martin is still following uh, Julian Kunze really closely, going through the Versailles from part of the track as we head back to Zöne and Gunnar. And yeah, it seems to be a bit of the theme of the evening that the Audi might be lacking a bit in terms of straight line speed. Maybe having a bit of the stronger sides at the start of the track, in this part especially. Um, fast corners, slow corners, maybe traction zones. Uh, obviously, depending on what the guys tuned on their car, uh, this top end speed might not be where it is for the Audi today. You surmised earlier in the race that uh, Leonard Carter maybe will hold on to the final couple of laps to make his move. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls at home, we are at that final couple of lap stages here in the NGK Spark Club Esports Championship Grand Finale. And can Leonard Carter in the green Audi that you see at the back of your shot do anything about the AMG Mercedes ahead? Time is rapidly running down on the clock to make a move happen. And it's going to be critical moments. I'm going to look in my crystal ball, chaps, and I'm going to say in 2024, this will be the highlights video that we look back at in the grand finale because this has got a golden race written all over it in these final few moments. I really hope so. Uh, but I'm sure both of them, as soon as, as they know it's go time, they will put in the show, I'm sure. Um, it's just, it's going to be interesting this time around on the, on the uh, Dettinger. It's going to be interesting to see uh, how Kart will play things out. If he will wait for next lap to get the get the overtake on the Dettinger, or if he will take position this lap and then try to defend next time around. So, what would you rather do? Is it wise just to get the deal done whenever you can and maybe try and get an advantage, or do you hold on to the dotting of her and then if you don't get it done, it's game over? Oh, he's, he's trying to stick down inside, going towards Moon. Oh, he's, he was so close, barely put a piece of paper in between the both of them. And this is the car that we saw in pit lane not a lap exactly. ago, so Filippo's not lost. 
as much so. time as I thought he would have done. So either that could it even simply have been a case of bit of oversteer, uh oh, pit lane entry. <laughs> I don't think so. Probably <laughs> just two or three liters of fuel and he's good to go. Maybe just a tiny miscalculation that cost him basically drive through here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, as we said earlier, it really depends on his part and how confident he is in his car setup. If he knows I, I got Winslow on top speed all day, he will go past next lap. It's really just a strategic decision for him to take and we can't really communicate with him. We can't fight out uh, until we see what's happening. Yeah, very brave. Whatever the answer is, at the end of this race, in the next minute and 50 seconds plus change, it'll be a brave move, whatever ends up being called by our top two. By the way, into the final minute, 10.5 seconds is the gap at the front of the field. Solikovsky is our race leader, and Julian comes in just about from Leonard Curtin. Carton in second and third position. Jordal Rosen having a quieter time of it now, 6.3 seconds to the good in fourth place ahead of a Mikai Neg. In sixth position, Sine Gunye ahead of Nico Cernel in seventh place. We Steph just, Kramer's in position eight. We just saw some great fighting into the, the Brinchen area by Filippo and uh, really going door to door there, which, which is not norm, which is not something you see every day. Going, going in there side <laughs> by side. Uh, so, really, some exceptional stuff. And part he is. He's staying behind, we're, al we're already past uh, the parking lot for the tourist drives now, so he won't launch an attack this lap. So it will all boil down to, to what's going to happen in 6 minutes and 30 seconds. I can't wait. <laughs> Andreas, who's your money on between 2nd and 3rd position, Kunze or Karten? Uh, it's very hard. Uh, Kart Karten, you just <laughs> went past. Oh. You just went past. <laughs> so there we go. It's a box. Oh, another what? bit of drama it's with a fuel, fuel issue. With fuel. I know. I'm, I'm certain it's a fuel issue. So this is exactly what we said at the start of the show. It's going to be marginal Tiny. on fuel. Just and two. look at that. Final lap. In you go. Wow. This is big, big drama here. And the nurse life of Steph Kramers as well. That we're looking at now in eighth position. I think he has just he made a move as well or lost a position. We'll uh, look at that one in a minute. But where does Julian Kunza come back out on track? third place at this moment in time according to my timing screen so Rosen not close enough to take advantage yet more frustration that that mistake has cost him and more people even are more. coming into the pits Nico Zernos into the pits so is it, is it the Porsches or no Kunz is in the AMG Zernos in the Audi we saw another <laughs> Audi early on so I'm sure people just weren't expecting the pace to be this fast and just Underfield, I'm sure. I can't, I can't imagine another explanation, especially because Quinza just took a tiny stop, like two or three seconds, probably just five liters of fuel or something, and yeah. that shows how tiny the margin is. And and the guy with the with the damage, all right? Yeah. Yeah, Colin, he's making his way up again. It's a gift that keeps on giving this race, gents. Now as we're down into basically overtime, so we're waiting to finish what will be the final lap of a 60-minute race. Big question, does Cody Nikola Otovsky have enough fuel in his car? We've seen people, it's too late now, we're past pit entry, so you've got what he's luckily, he's got 15, 16 seconds away from Carton, so he can afford a bit of lift and coast, and he can afford to be a little bit conservative if he's running marginal, but uh, this is the longest we've seen him on screen. This has been... Dominant performance from the Porsche yeah, he driver. Really, but sometimes at the, at the 24 hour race, <laughs> some <laughs> other risers, some other uh, racers are bringing the, the, the cars back to, to, to the. Uh, if they're getting crashed or something, but I, I don't think somebody will do this to Woody. Uh, as Mr. Felt had in the YouTube chat said, it, it's never over till it's over. And, uh, but as you mentioned, I think Cody has got plenty of space to play with now. He's got all the time in the world to save fuel, um, as long as he's paying attention to his fuel level. Um, I think, I don't want to jinx it, but if he doesn't do a mistake now, this, this, this race is his. And after his performance last year, where, where the win was ripped out of his hands last second, this is really a bit of a redemption arc for him. And also Carton, I think, also Carton, the gap, the gap of Leonard Carton is is huge for Vlatkovsky and Kunze catch caught up a lot so I'm not too sure if things are said and done yet. I 
We'll find out when the checker flag waves, because as you say, Carton is hemorrhaging lap time at this moment in time as we see Philip Powell just get a little bit squirrely through one of the corners, 12th position, holds on to that 12th position, so not under pressure at this moment in time. Covers the inside line, gets the run off the turn, does the hour day, and holds on to that 12th position. But Carton, Leonard Carton dropping. 21.4, I looked a few moments ago, that was 20 seconds, so is Carton nursing the car to the chequered flag? 4.5 seconds, he is ahead of Julian Kuntzer behind, so Carton not over yet, 22 seconds now behind is he, is our he, race leader. I'm trying to, to track his eye movement, is he always looking down because that's... that's Possibly the, so. That's where the fuel... He's also, this sounds like a bit lower refs to yep. me. Short shifting, not quite as aggressive yeah, on the he's, throttle pedal. He's definitely saving fuel. Oh, yeah, he's oh, breaking yes. very early. He's in trouble. Oh, this could be. No, oh, no. no. These this doesn't help as well, I hope. Oh, this is going down to the wire, ladies and gentlemen. I can actually feel the hairs <laughs> on my arm are sticking up a little bit now. And right this in the mirror, Julian Kunz is coming back. He, he probably was desperate, frustrated. Yeah, so this is not over for second and third position. We're riding, we're looking back now from Julian Kunzer in third place. Three seconds just under away from Leonard Carter ahead of him. So this is all on the second position. 60 minutes of racing comes down to the final. Few corners for the second and third position. Cody Nikola Latonske out front of the field is stroking away with things now. 24 seconds to the good. The battle is who will come on the second step of the podium and Kunza now can see his rival in front. I've Two got a seconds. feeling this is Julian Kunza's for the taking. If he can just keep pushing, will Carton not hold on to second position, but actually the question is, will he make it to the flag? I'm sure he will make it. As mentioned he in the chat, Lucas Wallering, as hard as he wants. Lucas Wallering, <laughs> one of the drivers who retired this car, he just mentioned all Audis and Mercs have to save a lot of fuel and probably Quince and Art weren't able to save enough. This is big, big drama. So it just, cho just goes to show that you need to push. You need to keep your alertness right to the very end of this race. And now, if you're Julian Kunzer, Leo, what do you do? What do you do? Do you make the move? Do you not know what your rival's in strife? How do you play these final few corners? Just to risk it all, go all out. Go all out. Yeah, yep, go all out. Depends Don't how much you back. want a headset versus how much you want a steering wheel, I suppose. Depends which one you've got in your armory already. But this is... Big, big drama, gentlemen, in the he's final few moments. Whoa. He's Very also close. into slipstream territory now. Just 8.8 seconds going into Schwabenschwanz. I hope, I just hope Leonard Martin is not going to, to stand still before the finish line. That would break his heart definitely and also my heart, I have to be honest. But let's see what happens on the, on the Dettinger Höhe now. Yeah, we've not got long left to go, but just keep an eye out that eight seconds in arrears is Jervall Rosen as well. So he's not a million miles away if Carton suddenly has to go into coast mode. And there we see now second and third position separated by absolutely nothing. As we see, Kunza goes to the inside. Does he get the deal done? Yes, he does. Whoa. Nice That's and easy. Done. And we can see Lakowski going around the last corner. And Paul, he wins the NGK Esports. And Spark Club. Fantastic stuff at the front of the field. A dominant victory for Lukowski at the front of the field. Julian Kunze just at the final death manages to hold on to second position. A couple more corners to go. Carter now giving everything he's got in that Audi. Does he have enough? Into the final turn through the last corner. Hard on the loud pedal. And Julian Kunze takes second position. Leonard yes, Carter in position three. And that, gents, was spectacular. Fantastic racing wow. right to the checkered flag. Yuval this Rosen is something what's what I need to see, <laughs> what <laughs> I want to see. <laughs> Yuval great, Rosen great, great and fourth behind Nick in fifth, and we can still see still see Berka and Pruitt going for it for 12th position. So even in the middle of the pack, there's still people sticking together after 60 minutes of racing on a Nordschleife. And that actually is an incredible feat, isn't it? Because let's not forget, this is Mr. arguably Cody the most difficult circuit in real and concert. virtual yeah. races. We go for the last lap pass contact between the two cars. The Porsche just about holds on to it, but doesn't quite get the deal done. But again into the final corner, does he have the run? No, he doesn't. As you were across the line, 12th and 13th position, right to the very checkered flag between those two. Erka keeping his 
exposure there. Wow, but what a finish. Yeah. Who would have imagined? Oh, it's, people are still racing. Fantastic. The gift that never gives, <laughs> that keeps on giving, it really. really. is such a large circuit, isn't it? That by the time it comes to the checkered flag, you're too yeah. busy giving out platitudes to everybody at the front of the field, but lower down, we've still got plenty of battles unfolding as we're looking now. 20th position, that is Schubeck, Lucas Schubeck in position 20. Can he hold on? Down the Dottinger Ho to the car behind, which is Roland Sen. A few tenths of a second, and they come to the conclusion of their race. Pop up. But there you go, guys. Oh, take a moment to breathe. That was uh, rather quite enjoyable, yeah. some might say. Lutkowski, Kunz and Kart, the top three, then Yuval Rosen with a great comeback drive. Mihai Nek, fifth position. Sinan Gunai, sixth position, also great drive from him. Steph Kramers, Colin Blankenbock, also great recovery from him. Sebastian Rhee and Nico Zönel, the top ten, who will receive prizes from NGK and our partners. Uh, then Enzo Filippo, Daniel Berger, Kian Hulit, La Panic, Riese, that's our top 15. And wow, <laughs> I need a breath, guys. That was exciting. Yeah, that was absolutely brilliant stuff, just like we expected coming into the show. And look, look at that. Look at that. And I have the honor to put Cody Nikola Latkowski's name on here. Yes, you've got your big pen. Make sure you don't smudge with said big pen while you're writing down the winners' names. And we've got a board for first, second, and third place. And, of course, just to remind you, the first place, first place prize even, get my teeth in, is those VIP tickets. And I'm hearing in my ear that we've actually got our race winner. Have a quick chat to, to celebrate his uh, victory. Cody, congratulations. That was dominant. How do you feel? Thank you. I, I feel uh, very relieved. Uh, considering, considering what happened, happened last year, year. Uh, came, came second by the by the smallest of margins, and now to, to come here this, this year and really, really just uh, put it all on the line, give it everything I got, and for it to just come, come back, back to me in space. space that was, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm very, very very satisfied with the result of the day. Yeah, congratulations once again. Um, uh. Because setup was a big talking point point today. Um, what was your approach? Should you go for for the for the low downforce setup with the high top speed, or were you focusing on the slower parts of the track, getting the traction, especially with the Porsche, who is really good in that parts naturally? What was your approach today? Well, uh, with the setup, it was more like trying to find a nice equilibrium where. It wasn't uh, being dragged it too, much being dragged straight, too much on the uh, straight because Porsche, uh, because Porsche inherently has bad inherently top speed. Has so bad top speed so uh, I was trying to maximize that while not making it too unstable. So I need to have a look at the so ray, to have a look at the down the, the, the spring ray, make sure the car is still stable at high speed. Uh, I think I kind of got there in the end. kind of got there in the end. But yeah, mostly focusing on top speed itself is very good in the twist. Uh, stuff. The twisty stuff, and yeah, just uh, and yeah, making just, it comfortable uh, enough to drive over the course to of the drive 60 minutes in. Over 60 minutes in. Cody, when you're at the front of the field by such a, a big margin that you were, how does that affect you in terms of pressure? Because, for want of a better way of putting it, it's your race to lose in that situation. How how hard is that mentally on on yourself as a driver? Well, I guess. Well, I guess for someone that's doing this for, for someone the first that's doing time, it would be a bit of a it would be a bit of a lot more pressure than usual. A lot more pressure than usual. But uh, I've I've but, been uh, through I've, plenty of I've these been... these kinds of races myself, so I've had some experience, and I know that uh, there is something in the back of my head that's saying, okay, you need to maybe let off a little bit. You're doing fine. You shouldn't keep pushing. But I've learned to kind of fight that mentality. I need to. Keep pushing no matter what. Keep going for the next corner because, at the end of the day, if I'm not driving, trying to beat the guy that's next to me, I'm trying to beat myself. So, uh, for me, that's how I try to become a better driver. And you know, after once you create a gap like that and start leading, I just find okay, get in a groove, keep pushing, and just do the best you can. Well, you did absolutely really well fantastic. You got a great prize, and also this very very cool trophy indeed which if i had room in my bag i would steal and take on the carry home because that's very cool so cody congratulations amazing performance and a richly deserved victory well done man thank you very much have a nice evening brilliant thank you very much indeed and 
It was a very good position, indeed, wasn't it? It was absolutely checked out from pole position. which isn't too common in racing. Um, it was really great to see <laughs> that this different level of, of excitement kicked in, really. Um, and Andreas. As I can now. Ooh, ooh. Important stuff coming in. Second prize, a Fanatec Club Sport Formula Wheel for Julian Kunze, who is ready in the interviews. Oh, he's ready already. So bring him on through then, please. And I would ask you, Paul. Julian, congratulations, sir. Great Congrats. race, <laughs> massive drama at the end. Tell me about that one. Was that, did it catch you by surprise that you needed the uh, extra bit of fuel or all part of the strategy? No, uh, good evening. Um, first of all, congrats to Nico. Amazing pace. Um, really, really good from him. He made the Porsche work. Um, yeah, last lap. Um, it was part of the strategy, so I had two strategies, one is fuel saving and one is uh, push as hard as I can and smash and dash in the end. Um, because the Mercedes uh, has a, yeah, is not going through with the full throttle strategy. Um, yeah, so in the beginning I was uh, noticing that I was in switching with uh, Leonard and um, yeah, could uh, keep up the pace, I had uh, fresh air in front of me. So I decided to use the, um, the second strategy and uh, splash and dash in the end. Um, it caught me by surprise that Leonard um, had to uh, lift off in the last uh, lap so much. I thought he would have been able to fuel safe enough behind me in, in my slipstream. Um, but yeah, so uh, lucky for me uh, and uh, strategy played out. Yeah, congratulations also from my side. Um, also having raced against you before, I know you're a super experienced driver on the platform. Um, uh, in the middle of the race, when it kind of was you and Leonard going head to head, just the two of you, um, uh, did you think it was a bit of teamwork coming in there? Or did you know Leonard wasn't going to attack because he wanted to work further forward? Or uh, what was going through your mind in that part of the race? I didn't. Uh, I didn't know if uh, Leonard is trying to attack or uh, stay behind. But as he was uh, the one lap behind me and uh, just wasn't moving out of the slipstream, yeah, then uh, it was uh, confirmed. I thought that uh, he wouldn't fight and um, yeah, head down and straight to the finish. That's what I, that's what we like to hear. Thank you very much, Julian. Congratulations again. Thank Have fun with the Fan Attack wheel. Right, and another great performance, of course, and surrounding all the drama, but what have we got here? Last but not least, we have a JBL Quantum 1 headset for our third place finisher, which is Leonard Carton. Also getting one of these. <laughs> oh, of course, yes. let's, have a look at the, uh, let's have a look at the trophy, get that one up on the screen as well. We got that down, so I don't know if the camera, there we go, camera can pick that one up, but a, a great little trophy, and I believe we've got Leonard available now. To give us a few words about what has been a drama-filled final conclusion of the race. So, Leonard, are you there, sir? Oh, we don't quite have him yet, so you'll have to hold that okay. board yeah. a little bit longer and I'll, do your best. <laughs> I guess people have a better chance to see it now than in the split-screen interview setting, so yep. uh, maybe he needs a drink yep, after Leonard. this race. <laughs> now Leonard is there. I'll, I'll Leonard hold it for here. a second. <laughs> Have a look. In our third position, sir, congratulations. A uh, massively drama-filled race. Talk me through those uh, final few moments and what happened. Yeah, good evening, guys. Uh, I'm still, my heart rate, I think it's just <laughs> still in the process of calming down. Um, it was such such a drama. I never had in my whole sim racing career such a last lap. So uh, I was, yeah, like Julian described already, I was... Uh, yeah, pretty close to him throughout the whole race, pretty much. I had a couple of mistakes here and there, and that always cost me those extra tents with which I could use to save fuel. But then I had to just use the full engine power and uh, everything to get behind him again so I could save fuel again. And 
Yeah, I was re actually really surprised that, uh, like, the whole race, I was uh, asking myself, what the hell is going on? Why can't he uh, push so hard all the time? What's his uh, plan here? And then uh, before the start of lap 10, he just turned into the pit, and I was uh, like, oh, Jesus, I saw my delta. I have still a couple of leaders to save. Uh, I thought, oh, man, how am I going to do this? I actually worked with uh, pulling the clutch to just get the rest of the engine down, save those extra little drops. And uh, then I always saw him coming closer uh, in, the, in the timing sheets. And so much pressure in the end. Um, yeah, it, it, I on the straight, I had like uh, 0, 0. 0 0.0 liters uh, in the Delta for fuel. And then he was so close behind me. And I thought maybe, maybe uh, I could uh, still defend it into the last corner and pick up second place. But it just wasn't enough. Then I decided to uh, go the safe way. Uh, well, I didn't really decide to go to safe. I still was really close uh, for the last breaking, but it was by the closest of margins. If I maybe had uh, saved 0.1 or 0.2 liters before uh, anywhere in the race, I could have made it. It turned out this way now, but I'm really happy either way. Yeah, great stuff. Um, it's been mentioned that, that Audi and Mercedes were struggling a bit of, with fuel, so... Um... Uh, is it right that your strategy really was to just adapt how the race is going fuel-wise, or did you already have the plan to to go all out, push push all race at the start, or what was your thought going into the race? Yeah, that was uh, exactly the difficult thing uh, in the preparation for the race. I did maybe two or three uh, sixty-minute stints where I actually drove the whole race distance, and I always worked with the engine mappings, uh, taking full power out of the corners, and then before braking. Uh, using engine mapping one and maybe lift and coast in a couple corners. I uh, ended up at maybe 11 point something uh, liters, which was just enough to finish the race. But in the uh, race today, when uh, things sort of settled down and I uh, started getting into the train, I noticed that it wasn't going to be enough. I always need the full, full engine power to even stay behind the Porsches. And uh, then throughout the whole race, I was just uh, yeah thinking over my strategy. How can I save these? leaders uh and yeah great stuff love to hear that congratulations again uh enjoy your headset and take a deep breath now you deserved it <laughs> thank you so Leonard. thank you very much time for a drink I think. <laughs> definitely time for several drinks i think for all those drivers so a lot chaps, of sweat we said drama we said it was going to be exciting at the beginning and it's paid massively i think we've got the winner's graphic coming up on screen there we go that is our top three finishers from 60 glorious minutes i'm going to ask you both i'm going to put you on the spot very quickly and i'm going to start with you andreas driver of the day who's your pick sir for me if, totally cody is, is driver of, uh, of the, for me because he stayed at the top he managed the fuel and uh as he as he stated, and as he's very, he stated it how he shoots the setup and everything. So for me, uh, yeah, Cody is the driver of the day. But it it's it's more that I it's more than I expected. So this this kind yeah. of this is really thrilling. It's really thrilling and just going to the box, and I was just wow, what's happening now? But I think he's also watching at the fourth place because he has a lot of yeah he has a little little gap to the first place and then I think this was also part of the decision to say okay I can go out and come back in again and try to fight so for me uh, it was more than it it was really great race ah, I stuff. loved uh, love to uh, love to be here and uh, and uh, watch the race yeah Cody. great and con congratulations again also from me to all uh, our participants and uh, yes. also for the for uh, for all the all the guys racing and uh, yeah, also, um, yeah, taking can, taking over these great prizes uh, here. And, uh, yeah, maybe meeting uh, also uh, Cody the first time maybe at the Nürburgring, yeah. <laughs> I got to say, Cody, man of the night. He was on a mission. Just yeah. the way, the detail he explained to us what was going through his mind, what was his approach to the race. Uh, so you can see he, was, he wasn't coming to play here and it definitely paid off. And yeah. it was... Something great to witness, I have to say. I think for me, the driver of the day is drivers of the day, and that's the entire field for keeping it clean, keeping it fair, 
keeping it respectful and putting oh, on a sensational show for us in the studio, for everybody watching at home. And actually on that topic, for everybody watching at home, thank you for tuning in to this broadcast. Thank you for being part of the community over the course of this uh, NGK Spark Plug Esports Championship. It's been an absolute pleasure to uh, take part in today's broadcast. I can't take credit for any of the other ones, but I was there in spirit. Of course, a, a massive, massive thank you to NGK for being a part of this championship, to Race Room, Racing Experience, of course, which is a great simulation on the platform that we use for this championship, to JBL, Fanatec, Traction, and of course, SX, all for being part of what has been an outstanding series. And don't forget, hashtag Ignite the Track on social media to stay attuned to any news any information that comes after the course of this race. And the last people I did say thank you to, are you two gentlemen for being there with me, alongside me, guiding me through what has been a fabulous <laughs> evening here in Munich. So, uh, Andreas, sir, thank you very much. And Leo as well, thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. I hope we, we meet again next year. Same time, same place. <laughs> for sure, <laughs> for sure. So, late folks at home, thank you all very much. And from us here, in the studio, we hope you've enjoyed the show. And until next time, we'll see you all later. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.